Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a Pareto chart that runs off of a pivot table. So we have a table here of items. Here's a list of items and their corresponding cost. And this table is a source for this pivot table here where we have our items again, their cost, and now here's a running total. And this pivot table is sorted uh, on a descending format based on the cost. As you can see, the running total here uh, goes from 39%, 72%, all the way up to 100%. So it's basically, it's a percentage of this value of the uh, sums as it goes up. Now, this particular pivot table sources into this uh, Pareto chart. Now, the Pareto chart is kind of loosely based off of the Pareto principle, otherwise known as the 80-20 rule. And basically, what it's saying is roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So in this case, 80% of the cost comes from 20% of the items. Um, now that's really just not a hard and set rule, but it's more of a heuristic. It's kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, you'll find in many situations when you do Pareto analysis that, that basically it doesn't really fall neatly into this 80-20, but for the most part, you can see that a, a large part of the effects are based off of a small number of the causes, maybe not neatly as 20%, maybe 20 to 40%, but it kind of gives you an idea, this Pareto chart gives you an idea which items uh, are the largest. But the main goal of the Pareto chart is basically to highlight the most important things uh, amongst a large set of factors that are contributing to something. So in this, uh, in this particular instance, uh, two items are contributing to the majority of cost. So I'll show you how to create this particular chart uh, based off of the pivot table. Let me go ahead and have this table copied onto a sheet here, which I've already done. And what we want to do is we want to create a pivot table off of this. So inside this table, we've already clicked into a cell. We go under Insert and go to Pivot Table. And we're going to create a pivot table uh, inside this particular worksheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on Existing Worksheet and just click a cell here. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to just bring the item over to the rows and the cost over to the values. Now what I want to do also is I want to sort this from descending. So I'm going to go ahead and click there, right click and go under sort and go from largest to smallest. And then what I want to do now is I want to put in another, I want to move the cost into the value. So I have a second instance of this and then I'm going to go ahead and make this right click that, click in there, right click and go under uh, show values I want to have it show values as a running total, a running total in the item. So I'll click OK, and now you notice that it is running. It's a running total right now. And right now, I can basically make a chart out of this, but I'm going to go ahead and do a little fine tuning. I don't want decimal places here, so I'm going to right click that, go into value field settings, and go into number format, and then go ahead and click on percentage, and just reduce the decimal places to zero. Click OK. Click OK. I kind of like to have my headers here be a little bit more descriptive. So I'll go under Design and go under Report Layout and go Show in Tablet Form. So now I have the item, then the cost and cost here. And I'm going to go ahead. I don't need this grand total here, so I'm going to go and click that and click Off for Grand Totals. So I probably want to change this a little bit. I'm going to change that to Cost. And if I just delete some of Cost and just delete that and press Enter, it's going to say the name already exists because that already exists. So what I can do is I can just pretend that there is a space here. I'll just add a space there. And basically, uh, Excel will see it as different from that because there's a space in front of there. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and just call this a running total, percentage running total. And then that's set. And I'm going to double click this to auto fit. And then the last thing I need to do here is insert a pivot chart that's running off this. Let me go ahead and close my field list here. I'll go ahead and go under Design. Oops, let me go and Analyze and click on Pivot Chart. The nice thing about Excel 2013 is they give you this option to create a combo chart. Uh, before, there wasn't this option. And prior to 2013, if you wanted to create a chart that had a column chart and also a line chart, or basically a combination of different charts all in one view, you had to create one chart first and then create another one. But now in 2013, you can actually have this option where there's a combo selection over here 
uh, on the tab here and lets you create a mostly most common charts combo charts are going to be your column chart with a line so this is what I want I'm going to go ahead and click on that's already selected I'll go ahead and also have the secondary axis be the line so basically there's one axis here that has uh, that supports the column chart and also this line chart I want to have this line chart on the secondary axis and that's mainly because the left here is going to give me my cost my my integers and dollars and then my right axis is going to be giving me my percentage so anything uh, between 0 and 100 percent is going to be very low right here so we want to have it on our secondary axis so I'm going to put this on the secondary axis and now you see there is that nice curve there and there's also the percentage here so I'll go ahead and click OK and then it's put the data over here the chart over here and this really I'm only going from 0 to 100 percent so I'm going to click on that right click and go into format access and then for the maximum value that's going to be 1 go ahead and click X to get out of there and now I have my 0 to 100 percent I'm also going to get rid of these particular um, field buttons so I'm going to hide these and now I have this so to get where we have like a nice formatting stuff I'm just going to go ahead and choose the predefined formats that Excel has under design I, I kind of like this one here so I'm going to go ahead and select that and now I have my Pareto chart here so if you also notice uh, this is a formula here and so the nice thing about it after you've sorted it here you don't have to go ahead and uh, resort it because the pivot table will already sort it out for you so if I go ahead and go under here let me go ahead and just refresh this table and it's going to change the values here because I have a formula that randomizes the values so if I click here and right click and go under refresh you'll notice now that the values have changed but the sorting has uh, kept it where we have the descending the largest values come first so if I just kept right clicking and going to refresh you would notice that it stayed the same so this is kinda nice where uh, the, re the resort takes place within the pivot table uh, in an earlier video that I had before this was done with formulas but the nice thing about a pivot table is you don't have to do any formulas you can just do the running total here and have the chart based off of the pivot table and if you had new values change here and just refresh the pivot table right click to refresh the pivot table it would automatically uh, resort and also show it in the pivot chart so that's the way that you can create a Pareto chart based on a pivot table I hope that helps thanks for watching